in the destination this time around, a world-class city that will host the world's best gymnast at the Olympics two years from now. A year ago at the Olympics in Tokyo, Jade Carey was standing atop the podium on floor exercise. Now, she's in Tampa looking for a national title. Joined by another Tokyo Olympian, team silver medalist Jordan Childs, both women looking for spots on that 2024 Olympic team. But they'll have to contend with young stars like Connor McLean, long considered the next big thing in the U.S. This weekend, she'll look to deliver on that potential in a field full of Olympic hopefuls. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2022 UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championships. And we walk in the inside Emily Arena here in Tampa, normally the home for the NHL's Lightning this week, the UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Thrilled to have you alongside Terry Gannon and the two Olympic champs, Tim Daggett and Asti Lukin. Good to see you guys. First time since Tokyo in the booth together. Uh, we've gotten used to watching Simone Biles win this national championship. She's won seven of the last eight. Simone's taken some time away from high-level competition. Paris not out of the question, though, so we'll see what the future brings. We do have Olympians in the field here trying to win national titles, though. Oh, absolutely. Two of her Olympic teammates that we just saw on the floor with her in Tokyo, Jordan Childs and Jade Carey, who, of course, we all remember Jade coming away with that ultimate Olympic gold medalist. That is something that will live with you for the rest of your life. But, you know, we were talking about this earlier. It's almost as if they're a little overqualified here, but huh. they are so eager to be back here on the competition floor and to be out here again after the Olympics. It's it, it really feels a little different this time. Certainly two of the favorites coming in this week, but they're not alone because, yeah, gymnastics fans know some of the other faces and names, but we're just starting to get to know them in that run towards Paris, and there's one to certainly watch, Tim. Absolutely. Somebody that's been on the radar of just about everyone for a long, long time is Connor McLean. She just has so many wonderful gymnastics qualities, very nice lines. She's powerful. She's quick, flexible. She is a pleasure to watch. Can't wait to see her tonight. Biggest names in U.S. gymnastics competing this week for a national championship. The first of two nights for the women. We get things started here in Tampa when we return. A good look at downtown Tampa where for the first time UFO's U.S. Gymnastics Championships are taking place. Night number one for the men took place last night. The women get things started tonight. Also with us, the four-time U.S. all-around champ, John Rocklisberger is here. John, what's on your mind? Oh, there's a lot on my mind, Terry, but we're going to start with gymnastics scoring. There's a lot of layers to gymnastics scoring, but for the sake of not overloading our brains, I'm going to try to keep it simple. There are two parts to a gymnastics score. There's execution and there's difficulty. Now, right here, this is the graphic that we use to score each of the athletes. And today, for our example, we're going to score one Olympic champion, <laughs> Nastia Lukin. This is Nastia at the 2008 Olympics. We're going to start with the difficulty score, that number right there. Every gymnast competing tonight will receive two points in difficulty just for doing the very basic requirements on each event. On top of that, two points are added the values of the eight most difficult skills that the gymnast does. Each skill is given a value. You add those together. You add the two points. And that is the difficulty score. Now we're going to move over to the execution number right there. Every gymnast competing tonight will start with a perfect 10 in execution. Out of that 10 come deductions, things like form breaks, steps on landings, miss handstands. The biggest deduction, a fall. What's left of that execution, what's left of that 10 points, this number, Nastia, very nicely done, a 9.025. You add that to the difficulty, that is the gymnast's final score. And Nastia, I do have some news for you. I know that you got the silver medal on the uneven bars in the finals. I know you're disappointed. We went ahead and we changed the score. We felt like you <laughs> oh deserved gold. Gosh. We added a 10 as of this moment because I have the Surface tablet you get the gold medal. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, you, you just made my day. <laughs> Can I just say, you've never looked more uncomfortable on camera than the last <laughs> Yeah, that, I had no idea that was coming, but thank you. <laughs> so one more thing we've got to add. You're probably wondering at home, what is a good score? I will tell you, nobody is going to score like Nasia scored on those uneven bar routines back in 08. The code of point is different. A, gr a very good score today will be about a 13.5 on most events. If you average a 13.5, that means you'll get a 54 in the all-around. What we've seen in 2022 is that 
that score very likely could get you on the podium. So keep that in mind, a 13.5. A 5.5 is a good difficulty score. An 8.0, somewhere in the 8.0, is a good execution score. So keep in mind that 13.5. If it goes up, if you see a green, that means it's a great score. You see a yellow, uh, getting a little sketchy. You don't want to see red. John, well done. Gives us a little benchmark there, but the yellow, the red, and the green, you can just stick with that too and just have an idea. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember for me, it was always try to get a 9.0 or higher in the execution. Which you mostly did. So here we go. Get things underway over on vault. The 15 year old from Gilroy, California, Nola Matthews. A couple of other events so far, high level events like the Winter Cup, where she competed recently, Donovan Bars champ in that competition. Your Chenko style vault. Very nice, full twisting laid out your Chenko. Not as difficult as we will see later on in the evening, but a really good start. I saw her in training and I knew she wasn't slated to do anything harder, but it looked to me like Certainly she could, she's pulling it off in the gym, there's no question. Yeah, and the difference between, you know, pulling it off in the gym and, and doing it here on this competition floor, the surfaces are so much harder. If you land a little bit short in the training gym, mats are softer. Here, you just don't really want to try something that you're not 100% ready and confident to compete. Saw her at the U.S. Classic recently as well, sixth in the all-around there. How long does that take to get used to the different surfaces? Well, that's why these athletes come out here, you know, days, um, and, and they have their training sessions out here, but in, in the podium as well, which we will talk more about, but really has a different feel on every single apparatus. Okay, Jordan Childs, who is one of the stars, the team event at the Olympics, and that U.S. silver medal stepping in when Simone Biles did not continue in that team event. And here is the 21-year-old from Vancouver, Washington. Same vault, but add a full twist to it. Wow. Excellent. And that is the kind of confidence you see from an Olympian right there. Yeah, that was great. So take a look right from the table, right here where she blocks off of the table so much height and just a tiny hop there. Good locked arms, throws them back to the table and doesn't push, but rebounds off that table. That's exactly what you want to see. And you want to stay, of course, inside those two main lines. Jordan, now a star at UCLA. So many of these athletes, the elite gymnasts now starring in college as well. The number 13-1 for Nola Matthews. Yeah, and you see that difficulty score of that 4.2. So as you mentioned, Tim, a lot less difficult of a vault than we saw from Jordan even more to come as well yeah and with these vaults every half turn is going to add another four tenths so Jordan Childs for example is going to start at a 15.0 that's her maximum score so Connor McLean the 17 year old from Cross Lanes West Virginia is getting set to get her run at a national championship underway has been through so much in the last year lost her dad Mark tragically to COVID along with her grandmother this past December and, and took some time to get the motivation to get back in competition. Obviously, that's devastating. And the patch with his initials from Mark McLean on her leotard. Yeah, and she told us, you know, her biggest motivation is to achieve her dreams, not just for me, but for my family. It's very, very important to her. And obviously, uh, your, your parents, big part of the coaching support system through all this. Too. Yeah, my, my mom right there, coaching her on, on the balance beam. And, you know, she kind of credits, it's hard for me to credit them, obviously, but she certainly has credited yeah. you know, them for calming her down, not as nervous on especially the balance beam. Of course, nerves are so, it, it's normal. It's important to be nervous. That means you care, you want to do your best, but you really have to learn how to control those nerves. and. You know, she's been able to finally get those nerves under control at least before the event even starts. So yeah, she was there a moment ago as well, Tim. Yeah, she used to actually make herself sick before the competition. And, you know, it, honestly, it's it was a huge problem. And, you know, that, that adds another level of stress that just makes it worse and worse. 
But this weight right here, this is. I was going to say, plus the weight doesn't this help. This does not help at all. Especially it's, before beam, right? And especially when it is your first event, night one of the competition, but go time now. She said throughout her entire routine, throughout every single element, every single skill, she thinks about all the corrections that Anna tells her throughout the routine every day in the gym. Big start right here. Back with a full. Perfect. Huge, huge tumbling series right here. Oh. Gorgeous. Wow, that was fantastic. When you rebound into the laid out somersault, much more difficult, harder to land, get a lot more flight. Nice toes, good extended knees. Absolutely stunning, that skill right there. So difficult. Boy, this is... Complete side of the beam. This has been a really great routine. Just put this dismount to her feet. Double pike. Wow. Absolutely no visible look of nerves whatsoever. Been thinking about the Olympics, the Paris Olympics. 2024 since she was 11 years old told Steve Harvey on little big shots I'm training for the 2024 Olympics not just that but to win oh and that's exactly what she told us a few days ago in training and that skill right there so difficult back with a full twist and watch this tumbling she rebounds off of both legs flies into the air as if she's on the floor. You know, it is just so incredible. And right here, two back handsprings into a double pike, tiny hop. Oh boy, that was a, that was a phenomenal routine. Really, really good. It's good. <laughs> she agrees. <laughs> <laughs> on the big screen, they're showing replay of that. And they're taking that in as we go over to vault. The 20 year old from Auburn, Washington, Shiley's. Jones, another one of those names to certainly watch over the next couple of years in the run towards the Olympics. Absolutely. She is a tremendous talent. She has been for a long, long time, has underperformed a little bit in competition, sometimes makes some mistakes that are a li little bit like shaky concentration errors. She'll have no problem on this, though. Beautiful vaulter. Tremendous power. She'll do the same ball we saw from Jordan Childs. A Yuchenko double twist. Beautiful. Beautiful position in the air. Completely stick straight, but has so much power. And that is also something that she struggles to do sometimes is control that power. You saw that big hot back on the landing. But just absolutely gorgeous in the air. You see her almost even have to yeah, take her arms, her arms out, out. Yeah. to stop herself. But yes, Timmy, as you were saying, little bitty feet separation there towards the end. That's going to be evaluated extremely well. I've seen her do that better. She was a little bit high on the table and didn't get quite the same bounce that she typically does, though. Nastia, what did it make uh, of the number? 14.35 for Jordan. Yeah, and that's great. So you see that execution, 9.35? Yeah, that is, in today's gymnastics world, a 9.35 execution is out of the park. As I was saying, you know, we you always strive for perfection, that 10.0, but it's pretty much impossible these days. And you so the 9.0 is something that you look for. In my opinion right there, that 8.4 execution, it, it seems a little bit low. But a solid number, 14.8. Oh, a very, very really solid. Good. She's got, she has a huge maximum potential score, so. All right, uh, how about Jade Carey? A moment ago, coming off that great Olympic success, 
and now a star at Oregon State, Pac-12 all-around champ, the floor champ there. This was her effort on vault. And that's about how she did it just about a year ago in Tokyo. That's called a Cheng. So she does two vaults, and your Cheng go double twist right there. She is capable of adding that extra half turn, but really no need here. Getting back in the swing of things. Let's go with the first one, and that's the number for that first effort on vault. 14.8. So it's been green, green, yeah. green. The scores, they're up there. A lot of good stuff. You know, Jade, she was favored to win a medal, certainly on vaulting, but had a terrible mishap, and it was on her chain that she kind of missed her steps. I asked her, so what happened, Jade? Because it was so hard to tell, and she honestly could not tell me what it was that went wrong. She didn't know if she tripped. She just missed her steps at all. And I said, are you ever going to look at it? And she goes, not until yeah. I'm done. That's the thing. She also hasn't watched it. So. And you know, that is so common, you know, in gymnastics to, to get your steps messed up. But to happen at the Olympic final, it's devastating. 18-year-old from Overland Park, Kansas, getting set on bars. Leanne Wong, who went to the World Championships, won an all-around silver medal in 20. 21. And she was a part of that team as an alternate in Tokyo for the Olympic Games. Unfortunately, her roommate, Kara Aker, contracted COVID-19, and she spent basically the entire games in quarantine. Gorgeous lines and positions right here. Really, the judge is looking for those handstands right on top of the bar. Oh, that like was that. great. Perfection. New element for her. Excellent. She faltered on that just a couple of weeks ago at the U.S. Classic. Beautiful. Just the dismount right here. Might be one of the best routines I've seen her do. Double layout. Guys, what a start to this meet, huh? Unbelievable. They've come to play, all of them. I'm really, I don't know if I've ever seen her do a, a better bar routine w without any form deductions. She had great rhythm. So once again, looking for those handstands right there. And here's that first release move. You see her just catch the bar, her eyes see it first, really, and then come the hands right on top of the bar, finishing right in the handstand. And there's that new skill, as you mentioned, him little leg separation little at bit. the very end. Gets a lot of speed on her giants. She's got to flip her body two times over, and she stays board straight in the air, just the smallest little hop. If it's less than shoulder width apart, that's one-tenth of a point, which that certainly was more than shoulder width. It's three-tenths off. Star at the University of Florida now, too, helping the Gators to a second-place finish at the 2022 NCAA Championships. And we may wait for that number. Earlier on, balance beat. Sky Blakely, the 17-year-old from Frisco, Texas. Love this mount. Very, very interesting, fun. Very nice. It's a lot harder than it looks. Triple turn in a wolf position. Now this I always is... say it's not my favorite skill, but it is so difficult. But this, even oh. more difficult. Oh, I'm just was a little off right there. Heartbreaking. You know, it's a, we talked about it on the men's show last night. It's uh, gymnastics. It's always about risk reward. You do the harder stuff, you potentially can get a better score, but you can also come off the apparatus just like that. All right, how about Kayla DiCello, the 18-year-old from Boyd's, Maryland, Tokyo Olympics alternate. After a sixth place finish in the all around at the U.S. Olympic trials, she got things started on floor exercise. You know, she's going off to college here. Actually, from this competition, all of her bags are packed. Yeah. Four of them, I think. She yes, said. four, four yeah, suitcases. Yeah. Suitcases. yeah. <laughs>
Great routine here. She said that still making that World Championship team later in the fall is maybe an option. She hasn't really decided. She was playing very coy with us, saying that perhaps, you know, right now she's dead set on going to college, but perhaps something could change her mind. World all-around bronze medalist in 2021, headed to the University of Florida to compete for the Gators. 13.85, the number for Kayla DiCello on floor. And Lian Wong, 14.2, guys. It's, a, it's another very good score. Execution score, 8.5 on uneven bars. That is hard to get to. There are so many different errors that you possibly can make. You know, it's not just you do one skill and they could take a deduction for one thing. That skill, there can be, you know, there might be seven or eight different things that you can deduct for. So underway and closing out the opening rotation. First of four, Jade Carey, the top numbers so far. A lot of gymnastics left tonight, though. Night number one of the UFO's U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Tampa. Gymnastics fans know well. 2008 Beijing Olympics, Chelsea Memel, part of a silver medal for the American team effort. Now part of USA Gymnastics. New structure, three people leading things. She's the technical lead so far this year, and she's standing by right now with John Roethlisberger. Thanks, Harry. Chelsea, you competed at this competition last year. You're here in, in quite a different role. Tell us about it. Um, I'm excited to be here to observe in this new technical role. I'm excited to, uh, honestly, I'm excited to watch. I'm excited to see, you know, where the girls are at this time in the season and just eager to start making some of the changes that we think will help the program. So you, you, are, an, you are an Olympian, you're a world champion. What as an athlete can you bring to the table that will help you in this new role? I've been through so many different like scenarios and ups and downs in my career and I think that's only going to help because I can really empathize with the athletes like I said having gone through so many different things and just be able to really bring that athlete perspective into it and take that into account when we're making these um, you know decisions that that again we just want to help elevate their performances in a good environment so they they won silver the U.S. won silver in, t in the last Olympics what if you could point to one or two things that they need to do over the next two years to get back on top what would it be one of the things that stands out to me most is still working on the artistry i think they've improved a lot and um but i still think there's a way to go on that and that's going to help us on beam and floor just get those scores up and i, I think we're good with the difficulty on floor also working on landings a little bit on floor but so far you know they've looked really good i think we're in a really good place um, but to keep working on on those things it's it's gonna be good then thanks Chelsea and, and Terry Chelsea is still one of the best judges in the world as well she wears a lot of hats back to you busy busy these days that that women's high performance structure I was talking about Alicia Sacramone Quinn also the strategic lead so she is a part of that team and also Dan Baker the developmental lead so it's it's new this year guys yeah, they, they split up. It was typically one position. You go back to Marta Caroli, Valeri Lukin, and Tom Forrester was the last one in Tokyo. So, new structure leading things. Jade Carey's leading things here at the National Championships after one rotation as we continue from Tampa. Tampa after the opening rotation here, night number one for the women. Jade Carey, Connor McLean sharing that top spot. Chalice Jones, then Jordan Childs. Leanne Wong. So, John Roethlisberger, do you have an update on how things have gone so far? Yeah, well, I was asking Alicia Sacramone and, and Chelsea Memo, you know, what grade do you give the women after that first rotation? They kind of both looked at each other and said, hey, minus. Where, where's the minus coming? <laughs> Pretty spectacular. Hey, yeah, you got to leave room for improvement. You can't okay. throw the big score early, Terry. Well, got you it. know, and, and after listening to Chelsea, it seemed like, you know, she said a little bit about the landings as well. So perhaps that's where the minus comes in. Maybe some more. We'll hear some of Tim's famous lines, and then perhaps <laughs> that'll be an A+. Plus. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we haven't gotten one tonight yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Yeah, you know, still in search of. You, you talked about, we just saw Jake Carey, and, and she's sharing the lead right now. You, you do carry yourself a little differently when you have been to the Olympics and competed. Oh, absolutely. And coming back out here, a lot more eyes are on you. People know your name. 
people are cheering for you, but also people are expecting you to be that same athlete gym and gymnast that you were a year ago. And that's a little bit of added pressure, to be completely honest. Confidence Forever. is there, but you're, you're living up to it then. You're having to live up to it. Absolutely. Connor McLean getting set on floor exercise. Boy, this is two events in a row for Connor. Yeah, they're where, really testing her. Um, <laughs> has, has had level to wait. Of nerves. It didn't bother her at all on on beam, so this really shouldn't be anywhere near. I would say beam and bars is probably the worst for. But, absolutely, but I think no matter what event you're on, it's it's especially when you're first up on the apparatus. It, it becomes frustrating, to be completely honest, as an athlete, because you're just looking at the judges, staring at them, saying, can you just please let me go? Yeah. Come on now, <laughs> looking at your watch. Yeah. And there's no update. There's no like, oh, we're going to you have go, a few you're minutes. You're going to go in yeah. 10 seconds, or you're going to go in 30 seconds. It's just, you know, they're going to, what they do, actually, is the judges will raise a green flag, and then you have to mount the equipment after that. But. So that's what she's doing. She's looking at the head judge's table right now, and I'm looking at him as well. And there's a lot of conversation going on down there. As an athlete, I mean, what, what would you do in this situation? It, it, take baseball, you're standing in the batter's box, you would walk away. You, you, yeah. you, know, you go walk around or go somewhere. Well, and, and there's her coach, Valeri Lukin, and he's over by the judges, I, I would imagine figure out saying, what's going on. hey, come on, let's go, guys. Because at this point, as we mentioned, she's first up, so there are no judges' delays for the athlete before. You know. But I'm looking at Pat Panichas, who's one of the judges, and she's definitely got her head completely turned, and she is trying to, to converse with somebody else. There we go. All right, finally. Gotta shake it off. Put it beside you and do the floor routine that you know and have been training to do. Yeah, fabulous tumbling. Really, really great. There was one leap in there, Nastia, that I thought she kind of fumbled just a little bit. But you know what I have to say? From a year ago, when the nerves got to her, without any of those holds, she is a completely different athlete right here. No, she was not phased on both events. You're exactly right. Especially with that weight. You're absolutely. All right, over to Caitlin Jong, the 16-year-old from Allen, Texas, who is the U.S junior all-around champ. I asked her the other day. She's got a big skill coming up right here, though. We've seen this earlier. Back with a full. Ooh. Holds on to it. I said, hey, have you ever looked at the people that 
We're junior all-around champions in the USA. Some of the names on the list. Have you ever looked at them and seen what they've gone on to accomplish? And she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of the conversation. That was it. I said, you know, you just look at that name and it's, you know, a roster from top to bottom of iconic gymnastics legends for the USA. And even with the Olympics being still two years out, great combination right there, a little off, but two years out, every single athlete, as, as you just mentioned him, every single athlete wants to win a national championship. To become the national champion of the United States of America, that is something that you want to do, both on the junior level and then the senior level. So, yes, nobody's making the Olympic team here, but bragging rights, and you are going to yeah. have that title for the rest of your life. Double pike, nicely done. You know, we, we heard from Chelsea earlier, and one of the areas that she said she really wants to key in on is the artistic component. They are very, very, you know, just uber critical now with that component on both balance beam and floor exercise. She certainly needs to improve in that area. Kayla DiCello a moment ago. And this on vault. Oh, very nice. Really good stuff. So five for the difficulty, 9.2 execution, adding up to 14.2 for the effort on vault. You have to wonder what is going through her head when she knows that she is about to embark on such a different journey here. One that Jade Carey here just embarked on and completed her first year of college. Very different experience than a national championships here. But I have to tell you, she is up against the wall right here. In warm-ups, the general warm-ups, she fell off on a major release skill five times in a row, and the one-touch warm-up right before she competed, just maybe two and a half minutes ago, she missed again. And now she's had to wait quite a while before this starts. It's right in the beginning. There we go, this is the element. Grab the bar. Well, she did that, but she was supposed to connect it to another skill. I mean, even bars really has Never been her strongest event. Beautiful. She said, I never thought I would be finding myself at the Olympic Games competing on bars. Eighth in the, eighth in the world at the Olympics in the all around. Unbelievable. She says that that's one of her greatest accomplishments. Full twisting double. Super upright landing. Hop back. A lot of mental strength, I have to say, has really been shown here. Tim, as you said, she had... <laughs> exactly. So she she missed that release six times in a row. That's, and that's then, crazy. When she puts her hand up, she grabs it. And that's a great athlete because when the green flag goes up and it is your time to go and it counts, she did it. Find something when the lights go on. Jade Carey, star at Oregon State now, Pac-12, all-around champ, great experience in that first year. Her dad, Ryan, her coach. And go, go, gadget arm. <laughs> go, go, gadget arm. She said she's th just stretched her body out. So while that was taking place, the support, teammates, and that's what they both said competing in college. There's a, a lot more cheering going on. And they said that they both wanted to bring that's this great. energy right there to the competition well, floor. <laughs> well, they used to be Pac-12 kind of teams, but not for long. Well, that's true. Yeah. UCLA's moving on yeah. Yeah, right to the Big Ten. There is that experience. We'll talk more about it, though. You've got many more athletes now, uh, women elite gymnasts going to college and then coming back to the elite ranks and looking to make it to the Olympics. Child's on uneven bars. Great combination right there down to the low bar. 
But you know, I don't really think people grasp just how monumental a task Jordan was asked to do at the Olympic Games when Simone Biles had to pull out of the competition. On, she, on this. Yes, she, she was told she was going to do only two events that night, and this wasn't one of them. She ended up having to compete on all four. And, you know, a lot of people said maybe they're disappointed with the silver. No, they won a silver medal. And a lot of it is because of that young lady right there. Absolutely agree with you, Tim. She was first on bars in this rotation. You saw the number there for Jordan Childs. Yeah, I think the fight of those teammates, and that's what they keep talking about, too, that they had to fight for everything in Tokyo. Alice Jones now getting set to go on uneven bars. And this is a very big routine. Huge high-flying releases. Done in combination. But this is great if she can put it all together. Toe to handstand. Watch her fly here, down to the low. Gorgeous. All three difficult skills, but combined together makes it even more challenging. No room for error. Little short on that handstand. Just the dismount. Double front. Wow. Wow. Had it. <laughs> but that is big for Shailise Jones. Absolutely. She has always had the ability, the talent, without question. She flies as high as anybody in the world on not just one event, but all of them. She's so spectacular. She talked about trying to stay within herself, not get too overexcited in different parts of the competition, and certainly it all came together here. So that handstand just right there, tad short. But look, this dismount, double front, and she just eyes the ground. You know, I'm going to blame the mat there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like she tried to slide back a little bit and got caught. <laughs> Should be a good number. We'll get that as we continue here, and they continue on night one of the U.S. Championships. Back with a number on floor exercise, Connor McLean after that weight, 13.9. Yeah, it's a good number, but you see the 8.1 we've seen a little bit higher so far. That's not a bad execution number, though. If you're above an 8.0, you're really doing well. So McLean in second place overall. Caitlin Jong for balance beam, 13.2. Number four rotations tonight. This rotation number two. And Wong a few moments ago on balance beam. 18-year-old from Kansas, second rotation. I don't know, I, I'm not quite sure I would have had the nerve to go back to Tokyo when your first experience, you just fell short of making the Olympic team and then your roommate contracts COVID, you're in quarantine the entire time and two months later- You mean for the Worlds? Yeah, the Worlds are, yeah. in, are in Japan again. Yeah. I'm sure she's happy she went with the results she had. We heard a little bit of waffling from Kayla DiCello on whether she would go to school, whether she could possibly compete in the World Championships again. We asked Leanne Wong that question, and she said, yeah, absolutely. I talked to her coach, Al Fong, and he said, yes, that is absolutely the plan at this point. And it, it really is a you know, kind of a personal preference. Some athletes are truly just ready to move on. Going to college, it's, it's a little bit easier competing in college in certain scenarios. and others, you're competing a lot more often weekend after weekend, which I do think also has given them that experience. We yep. have to be on that competition floor weekend after weekend. Pretty oh, darn good routine, good though. Good save right there, though. Yeah. 
big squat on that landing. It, like we said, there are so many different criteria that can be deducted if you squat down. That's a big one. You want to avoid that. Get the number four, that effort in a moment, but over the floor. It's kind of Blakely getting set, being announced right now. a new pass for her. Very nice, but a step back and out of bounds. That'll be a total of four tenths off. That's a good recovery from that fall on the balance beam in her first event. And a big smile. Got a smile <laughs> for that reason. For the 17-year-old from Frisco, Texas, Sky Blakely. Confirmation from her coaches there that it was a good effort. So we'll get the number in a few moments. So we check in now with Zora Stevenson. Well, Sky Blakely used the word happy over and over again in our chat with her that's week, this week, and that's because after an elbow surgery and a seven-month recovery, she's back doing what she loves. She's back doing the floor routine that we just saw. Now, the injury happened at the Olympic trials last year. The fall took her out of the running for Tokyo. The road back to the gym included three physical therapy sessions a week, working at a range of motion again, a lot of stretching, strength training, and a time with sports psychologists. In Sky's return to competition this year, she's already earned six podium finishes. Talk about about bouncing back. Her immediate goal right now is to make the world team. Part of that process includes doing well this weekend. And that was moments before she was getting ready to compete at the Olympic trials. Right. She had done well at the U.S. National Championship. She was absolutely part of the conversation that she could possibly go to Tokyo. 35 days too young to compete in Tokyo originally. Then it was pushed back a year. She was right in the mix, had a great chance. And then the elbow surgery last July, seven months of rehab range of motion the toughest part but back and competing here in Tampa at the UFOS US Gymnastics Championship night number one for the women in Tampa's goal scorers Cristiano Ronaldo and Man United hosting Mo Salah and Liverpool Monday three o'clock Eastern on Peacock so a couple of rotations in the books what an effort for Chile Shiley's Jones the number 14 8 Five, and Malter into first place. So a huge score on that effort from the uneven bars in first place. John, do you have more? You know, one thing about uneven bars that people may not know is that the handstands are so important. You'll see a great routine and you'll think, wow, that should be a good score. But if they don't hit the handstands, they're not going to score well. Shailise does a great job of that. Look at this one right here when her hand gets on. That is right there. If it's within 10 degrees, it's no deduction. That is right on the line. I'm going to give it no deduction. And that is one of the reasons why Shailise Jones just knocked that routine out of the park. Guys, a big number after a great effort there. Absolutely. So that is the leader, Shailise Jones, 20-year-old from the Seattle area. McLean Childs carried a cello, rounding out the top five so far. Jade Carey Golden 
in the floor exercise final. I went to the Tokyo Olympics and won a gold medal on the floor and quickly after arrived on here on campus at Oregon State. Sensational year, the most consistent. Jordan Childs coming through. I am a USA Olympian and I also go to UCLA. I wanted just to become an NCAA athlete and just to have fun, just to be like, hey, like I'm like everybody else. Like I just want to enjoy how you guys are enjoying it. Being on a Team USA team is something really special, but it is different than college because we know each other, but we're not with each other every single day. The best part at UCLA, I would have to say, being with my teammates. I mean, I found my best friends there. My team here is really great. I. I'm really grateful for all of them. They're super supportive in me and everything that I have done and want to do in the future. In college, it's more about like the perfection aspect of all of your skills and routines. Where in Elite, it's more like how difficult can you make each routine. It's a very different environment. You're always hyped, you're always having fun. It really is magical and like having your whole university group for you and like represent them is really cool. I hope that when I go back to Elite, people will see a little bit of a different side of me. I'm actually excited. I am doing these competitions for me. People may see a different Jordan. They may see the same Jordan. You never know what, what can happen through these next few years. I really just plan to take it one day at a time, but right now I'm aiming for Paris. Yes, I am going for 24. Just wanna prove to myself that no matter what happens, that you can come back stronger than you did before. I've just had so much fun in college gymnastics and I hope to bring that into Elite and show people that like we can do the best gymnastics in the world and still have fun. When talking about her first season at Oregon State, Jade Carey said, I have never had so much fun doing gymnastics in my entire life. And when I asked her, will we see you jumping up and down and cheering like crazy this weekend? She said, uh, I'm not going to do everything I would do in college. But the point of it all is that she wants to bring more unity to elite gymnastics. Jordan Childs agreed with everything that Jade says. She plans to bring more energy to the podium sidelines as well. And team, we've already seen that tonight as well. Sure, thanks. You know what reminded me of how consistent Jordan Childs was? in the lead up to the Olympics last time around. It's incredible. Yeah, she didn't have any any errors really at all. It, it was unbelievable. And that's the kind of athlete you want on an Olympic team. You want someone that is reliable, that can go up on any of the four apparatuses and know that you are going to get a hit routine. Yeah. Seeing, seeing more of that now too. We've always had in women's gymnastics from the elite level, you go to college and compete, but now staying open and competing on the elite level, still gonna make a run at the Olympics. Caitlin Jong now with the floor exercise routine underway. Has some big tumbling planned. Can do a double twisting, double somersault. Right there. A solid routine there, certainly a hit. But as I said about her on balance beam, the same thing is true on floor exercise, that artistic component. There are 
boxes after boxes of things you have to check and get right. One of them is poor expressive engagement according to the style of the music. Leanne Wong, we are told, has withdrawn from the meet. John, do you have more? Yeah, I just talked to her coach, Al Fong, and he told me that she has a little tweak in her ankle, that they want to be very cautious with it. They want to focus on the world selection camp and getting to the world championship, so she is out for the rest of the day. John, does that mean today, or does it also mean he Sunday night? He didn't specify night? on Sunday night. He just told me for today. Yeah, remember, this night, one of two cumulative scores in terms of deciding the national champion. Had a little bit of a, remember I said she squatted down very deeply on that landing, on balance beam. That didn't look to me, though, that it was something that could cause that, but. All right, Jade Carey getting set, currently in fourth place after a couple of rotations and about to step up to the balance beam. It is, it is different college to the elite level, but they continually talk about the enthusiasm and the support. And of course, she's got that Olympic experience <laughs> and that on her wrist to prove it. But you know what? It, not just the tattoo. This, she is a different young lady. She, I mean, she was always very sweet, very nice, but she is joyful yeah. now and exuberant. It, it is wonderful to see. Almost as if it just opened her shell a bit. A year in college being with teammates, you know, she, most of her career trained by herself yes, yep. with her with her father, of course, as, as her coach, but didn't really have many teammates throughout her career before college. Big series right here. Three elements in a row. Oh, cool. Just about to say almost yeah. perfect. Yeah. Kind of questioned herself a little bit there. From a gymnastics standpoint, as I mentioned earlier, competing every single weekend for months, that really does help coming back out here on the competition floor because as an elite gymnast, you really don't have too many competitions throughout the season. What, five? Some may, I was about to say maybe five, some three. Yeah. Three to five, really. And when you're not able to get out there on the competition floor, you don't gain the experience. You don't gain the confidence. She probably competed 13 times in three and a half months. Great tumbling into the double pike, step back. And competing that many times, doing a beam routine, under pressure, under nerves, and you still hit every time, gives you the confidence to know, I can hit my beam routine no matter what. No matter where I am, what competition it is, what leotard I'm wearing. <laughs> By the way, when she went to get the rings on her wrist, her dad went with her yep. right after Tokyo. She, she said, I made him. Yeah. <laughs> Her dad actually travels up to Oregon every now and again to check in and cheer on so his number, pupil and daughter. Caitlin Jung, 13.1, excuse me, Tim, for floor exercise. And now in second place, going into this third rotation, Connor McLean getting set on vault. And there was that 7-5 execution score for her. And I would say a large part of that was the artistic deductions. No waiting this time, got the green flag right she, away. She can do this great. We, we've seen this vault from a number of athletes. Double twisting, laid out your Chenko. Maximum score, 15.0. Gorgeous. And should be darn close to it. Wow. Capable of doing the more difficult vault, adding that half turn to the end. But yeah. she has had quite the month leading up to this. Had a concussion, had a big fall on the uneven bars leading up to the classic competition, really the Friday before right they before. left, yeah. yes. Remember getting the call from my parents saying they were on their way to take her, unfortunately, to figure out what was going on. And then she got back from that and unfortunately was sick for another week. So she really has not had a lot of training time. 
Now over to balance beam in first place after two rotations. Shailise Jones who tragically lost her father in December of 2021. Sylvester passed away. They were very close. She said it was the toughest six months after that of her life. Conversation with him towards the end really motivated her to keep competing at the highest level. The name echoes in my heartbeat. And on her leotard as well, she Here's has the date in Roman him. numerals. With her at all times, yeah. yeah. She said, everything I do and anything I do is for him. Including this beam routine. So similar to the experience that I was sharing with Jade competing and Jordan competing every single weekend in college, Chalice was able to go on the post-Olympic tour and perform. Big scale Arabian. Beautiful. She said that that experience really helped her also know that she can go out there and hit it. Any routine, under any circumstances, any lights, this is gorgeous so far. Yeah, that skill right there, that side aerial to lay out, step out, she fell on that at the Classic. She also fell on a mount, which was an acrobatic mount that she took out here. Excellent routine, a lot of power, always on everything, and she is three for three, night one of the U.S. Nationals. Live up to the expectations, Shailese Jones, coming together here on night one. John just passed me a note here. It's like we're in seventh grade again. He said that her difficulty was actually six tenths less than she did at Classic. She does have an injury to her big toe that has kind of made some of the skills a little tricky. Is that how you pass seventh grade? <laughs> well, no, I was talking about John. That's I, how. Oh, okay. 14.4, the number on vault for Connor McLean. Guys. And look at that execution, a 9.4. That is great. I think it could have been higher. I think it could have been nine five nine six. Same with on the balance beam for Connor there as well, in my opinion. 13-2 on balance beam. Jade Carey. So it's been an excellent night of gymnastics. Shailene Jones leading the way, and she has been absolutely sensational. Balance beam for Shailene Jones, 13.7. So. She and Connor McLean both with 43.1 overall, and they're tied at the top right now as we take you over to Uneven Bars in fifth after a couple of rotations. Kayla DiCello. Who's in fifth place going into this rotation. Has a nice look on bars. Remember, every single handstand is critical. That one was a little bit past. Big release. A little bit of a struggle right there to get over. But good fight, just gonna be a small deduction, but could have been yes. much larger. And as the, what the coaches always say, no matter what, even if it's practice, competition, keep fighting. Don't just jump off the bar. Full twisting double. Go. And there you got it. Gymnastics 101, baby. Fly high and stick the landing. That was gorgeous, Caleb. Took a while. <laughs> we yes. got there, though. Yes, we did. Guys, overall, aren't you impressed with the level tonight that we've seen? Yeah, absolutely. And, and as we were kind of mentioning, you know, this is the year after the Olympics. Yeah. So this is not normally what right. you see. It's kind of almost like a rebuild the next four years, but... We only have two years, and that dismount was beautiful. But that's a big point. Normally, you have four years in between, right. but you don't this time, so it's all accelerated. It, it is. But sometimes, mentally, it makes it a little easier, right? Yeah. <laughs> Knowing that, oh, it's not four years till the next Olympics. It's only two. 
if you're already part of the mix. Absolutely. If you're young and just on yes. the verge, maybe not. But either way, flies by. Yes, it does. <laughs> Lexi Zeiss, the 16-year-old from Omaha, getting set. Haven't seen her so far tonight, but a moment ago. Really? On uneven bars, Tim. Very happy to see her competing here. I was watching training early this morning. You see that right knee has a brace on it. She fell on this event. Kind of landed awkwardly. Sarah Jancy, one of her coaches, said she banged the knee a little while ago and just when she missed the bar on the transition from low to high, she kind of aggravated it a little bit. She was very teary-eyed seeing medical staff. This was the skill. No problem there. Oh. And another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. But she has had a great year. She went to the Pan American Championships. It was really her first major, major event and came away with a silver medal in the all around and a whole bunch of other medals. 14.1 the number on bars for Kayla DiCello. And into third place, at least for the moment. Jordan Childs getting ready for ba balance beam. Part of the top three going into this rotation. And Jordan, I have seen her train also. One of those acrobatic mounts, a round off layout, step out onto the beam, but they're very risky. And yeah, you get, you know, a couple of tenths more maybe, but you gotta stay on the beam. And if you don't, it's not worth it. Two layouts in a row. Beautiful. One of my favorite combinations. Three skills in a row. That's really critical now. Get some extra tenths of a point for that every time you do that. Nastia, what do you think? I see absolutely no nerves whatsoever. I, I was just thinking that. And, and to go back to what we were saying earlier about competing in college every single weekend, there is just something that truly raises that level of confidence in you. And especially on the balance beam, that is where it is always most clear. Yep. Long how, as you how you're feeling, right. the nerves, the pressure, the expectations, all of that really is right here on this event and so far it has been almost perfect just the dismount spectacular routine <laughs> and that was a little college celebration yeah, finish there, there. <laughs> although i have to say she kind of did that before she even got to college too she's always had lots of energy she's not a shy enthusiasm. young woman that's for sure tremendous Star for UCLA now, sights set on Paris and getting back to the Olympics. Said the biggest takeaway from the experience in Tokyo, the fight that that team had. It's been Shailese Jones on top of the standings right now. There with Connor McLean as we head to rotation number four. What a night so far for Shailese Jones leading the way along with Connor McLean. So those two at the top first of two nights for the women here at the national championships. Jordan Childs, Kayla Ticello, and Jade Carey rounding out the top five as we send it over to Zora with a special guest right now. Well, Lily, it is so great to have you on our broadcast this evening. We're going to talk all about USA Gymnastics and the championship that's going on, but let's start with some of the changes that USA Gymnastics has made in the lead up to Paris. What can you tell us about that? Well, one of the things that changes that we made was the high performance team structure with the women's program. It used to be one singular position. Now we've changed it into three individuals to make a team. And that's one of many changes that we're making as an organization. So we're really looking at transforming the culture, transforming our organization, transforming how we look at things. And you might have noticed that this week we launched a new brand. I saw it, and the crowd cheered when, when, when you put it up in the arena. Yeah, we're really excited about it. And so launching a new brand is just one more step in this organizational transformation. So we're looking to making many more positive steps going forward. Now let's transition to the U.S. championships. Why is this event so intriguing? 
It is so incredibly important. This is the national championships where national teams are selected and you are seeing the best of the best in the U.S. and frankly the world as well. One of the things that we're noticing on the women's side is elite gymnasts are now competing in college. How does that impact what you're trying to do with USA Gymnastics? No, it's fantastic. We're seeing careers of elite gymnasts being elongated, being lengthened. It means the sport is healthier than it's ever been. It means our gymnasts are healthier than it's ever been. So their careers are lengthening, and we love to see that. We love to see the connection to NCAA. We love to see our gymnasts coming back to the elite program after competing collegiately. We so appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Terry? Sure, thanks. So certainly um, some kind of powerhouse team, the, the U.S., through the years. It's It started... Some time ago, and you're included in that list, Nastia. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And national championships as well. Tim, I'll, I'll mention your national championship as well as your <laughs> Olympic gold medal back in the 80s. A few years ago. So Jade Carey getting set for floor. That'll be her fourth and final rotation with more on here. Here's John. You know, Jade Carey won the gold medal on floor exercise, and she's always kind of been known for that big-time tumbling. But there is a new emphasis on artistry, as Tim and Nasty have talked about throughout this competition. Jade and her dad both said college gymnastics has had a huge impact on her and her artistry. It's really gotten her to come out of her shell. But the judges have this new form that they work with that is like a crib note. And they have all these new deductions that they can take on artistry. Just on floor exercise, here's the sheet. If you can decipher that for a moment, good on you. But they can take up to 1.6 in deductions just on artistry on floor exercise. I talked to one of the judges before the competition. They said, I average four to six tenths in deductions just on artistry in every routine. So this is a big emphasis. Jade Carey, she said college, it's helped her a lot. See the list right here. Thanks, John. Um, guys, what's it mean in terms of what a gymnast is trying to do or having to do out there now? Even more to think about. <laughs> you know, every single time you go out there on any event, you're not just thinking about, okay, I need to hit this routine. You are thinking about the execution, the artistry, the grace, the dance, the turns, the leaps, as we talked about, every single movement, every single step, every single arm movement, everything is being judged. So Jade Carey, we're about to see the Olympic gold medalist on floor and just to take you back and remind you what we saw in Tokyo from her. Just spectacular tumbling. What a magnificent exercise. And you got to remember this piece of art happened the day before it was the lowest of low to the highest of highs. She said that was all because of her dad giving her that belief, you know, turn the worst day of your life into possibly the best day of your life, and she sure did. John, what do you have? Well, I was talking to Brian Carey before the competition about the tattoo that you guys had mentioned and how Jade had to kind of twist his arm to do it. He was telling me about the experience, and he said the tattoo artist was so amazed and impressed by Jade, the Olympic gold medalist in his tattoo parlor, that he had Jade autograph his leg with the tattoo, the tattoo pen. So somewhere there's a tattoo artist with Jade Carey's autograph on his leg permanently. <laughs> so hey, there you go. Wow. One more rotation left here tonight, the opening night. She said she got a brand new floor routine and you know, artistry is something that she really has struggled with in the past. And she said she actually really likes this floor routine and she doesn't dread doing what we call dance through. So <laughs> it's basically the routine without any tumbling. You're just truly working on the artistry, the dance, and very common to do some, something like that every day. And she said, I used to be like, oh no, not a dance through today. <laughs> but now she says she actually enjoys going out there and, and, and doing that. I, I like the routine a lot, actually. I think it suits her much better. And, you know, we've said it over and over again, the, the collegiate experience. And not just that, you, you got to remember also, after the tour, she went out with Simone Biles on the Gold Over America tour throughout the country. And, you know, it was a big party and a lot of dance numbers. But also talking to gymnasts that in terms of confidence and, and doing that over and over again, it helps then coming out to compete.
in my book, golden again. Wow, can she tumble? Just spectacular from start to finish. Absolutely awesome. You know, coming out here for the first time on a big podium like this since the Olympics as an Olympic gold medalist, there is a different type of feeling. Wow. I mean, at the Olympics, her mount, she did one extra twist, which she could have easily done here. That first pass, full twisting double layout, was just dynamic. Tanya Service Chaplin, the head coach at Oregon State. And you heard Brian, her dad say as she left the floor, absolutely awesome. From start to finish, really, since she has stepped foot into this arena earlier this week, the training, the energy, her enthusiasm, her positivity has always been here. But look at that. As if she is at the Olympics. It's unbelievable. And then this is her third pass. It's a double twisting, double somersault. Gymnasts, the best in the world, struggle with this in their first pass. She's post-Olympics, and it looks like that. Magic. Tim, now some people can't even do that pass. <laughs> Not just struggle in the first pass. And I have to say, she's definitely gotten better. She's more expressive with her body. Her hands are vastly improved. It, it, she needs more work. There's no question about it, but it's coming. It is, and, and it's just something that some of the athletes just really are not really born with that, you know? She's so powerful, so strong, but as you mentioned, she knows she needs to work a little bit harder on that, but she was really proud of herself for, you know, this new routine, and... Yeah, I like she's it. She's made a lot, of, a lot of effort, obviously, into the artistry. And it's, it's definitely paid off here. The confidence you carry as an Olympic gold medalist has to go a long way, too. Especially on your event. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it changes you. There's, there's no question it changes you. Individual apparatus titles on the line this week, not just the all-around, too. And remember, it's night one plus night two. Add the totals together. But, you know, it adds a lot more pressure as well. <laughs> sure. You know, she walks onto that floor, the green flag, goes up and she knows I better perform just like I did when I won right. that gold medal. So is, you, is it like that in training as well when you step out there and you know that other gymnasts are watching you? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes, of course. And, you know, a lot of these gymnasts, pretty much everybody, obviously, except for her teammate Jordan from at the Olympics, they were at home watching her on TV become an Olympic champion. It's, it's pretty inspiring. So over 14, that is the highest number on floor that we have seen so far tonight and a terrific from jade carey shylise jones now on floor been having a phenomenal evening and this can be just as tremendous Wow, what a proud day for this young woman. Four for four tonight. That's going to put up a good score. Can only go out there and do what you do. And, and she has tonight all four of the rotation. Shylise Jones. Waiting on the number for Shylise Jones after the floor exercise. So her evening is done. Remember, she shared the lead along with Connor McLean going into the fourth rotation. 
So Connor McLean getting set on uneven bars to round out the evening. And Shailise did her job. She certainly possibly even put a little bit of pressure on Connor here, but she is very, very good on this event and can absolutely rise to the challenge. Has a new skill in the routine. A little bit over on that one handstand. And this is tricky right here. Excellent. Oh boy. A little bit too close to the bar, which is a deduction, and was supposed to connect it right into that backflip. It's called a pack salto, so she'll, her starting score will go down. And not the routine that obviously she was hoping for, but the fight that she had. Miss connections was completely off, barely caught that last release. And yeah. Not an excuse, but a reminder that just last month had a huge fall on this event, had a concussion, took almost a, over a week off of training completely, was in the gym every day. But that right here, once again, shows mental strength to be able to come out here on the competition floor again. It's scary coming back from a fall like that. And that's where she was supposed to connect. And you saw her arms very bent right there. It was because she was too close to the bar. Didn't connect those two. But like you said, a, a great fight. And that one, that could have been really bad right there. I'm, I'm surprised she got her body square enough to hold on to that bar. Not doing the most difficult dismount she can do at this point, just not quite all the way back. But she again, showed a lot a of really important things today, though. She didn't. Just a few weeks ago, they weren't really even sure if she was going to be able to compete. Right. A concussion coming back and then was sick out of the gym again. But she should be proud of herself and you know her father is also proud of her. Meanwhile, the number for Shailise Jones, 14.1 on floor. And higher than Jade Carey's floor score. Remember, we talked about that number for Jade Carey. How about that, guys? Yeah, big, big number right there. And, and absolutely, I think that's the highest score of the competition thus far on that event. It and, is. And, 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 you know, for this, this is not going to be about her score. You see that right there. So 5, 6, 7, 7.7. But that's, that's pretty expected because she did have those errors. But again, sometimes it's not necessarily about that end score. For her, it was really about getting back out here on this event specifically. She has many new skills, new combinations, and to do that, especially going last, your last, your first event, your last event, it's always most nerve wracking. So in the second place, and of course you've got night number two, that's Suni Lee, I believe it is, the Olympic all-around gold medalist who we expect to see back in elite competition next year. Watching the championships here in Tampa. Yeah, has also gone on to college and has had an amazing first year there. And it's just so great to see another Olympic teammate, Jordan. All of them just truly having so much fun and the love and that passion and joy for the sport again. So Jordan Childs getting set for her final rotation. It will be on floor exercise in third place after three rotations right behind Chileese Jones and now Connor McClain who's in second and they've got all four rotations done for the night and Jordan with a shoulder injury she's coming back from too still dealing with torn labrum and micro tears in the bicep she's had a lot of treatment on it hoping to avoid surgery at all costs she said <laughs>
They're working with emotion right there. You know, coming back onto this elite stage, it's a lot more challenging than you would think because the routines in college are probably half the level of difficulty, half the passes, and, and she was able to come out here and do all four events. She wasn't even sure she was going to be competing in the all-around when she got here to Tampa. And there they are, the college athletes and Olympic teammates. And perhaps national team members oh, yeah. together again. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine that either of them will not be named to the national team. And the way it looks right now, they both look like they're going to be on the world team as well. Here's that opening tumbling pass. So as we mentioned, the equipment feels so different on a podium. And perhaps this is what happened right here. So full twist and double back and see her feet just almost bounce right out in front of her, or excuse me, behind her. But great recovery. That was a new pass for her. I don't think she's ever competed that. And then she just comes back with an exclamation mark. Beautiful double laid out somersault. And watch that landing, gorgeous. Obviously trying to make that Olympic team for Paris, but also trying to get to a first world championship too. Star at the Olympics, but trying to go to the Worlds this time around. Honestly, I have no words, but <laughs> we're back. We're back. <laughs> Did you leave? Did you leave? <laughs> All you need to say, we, we are back now. I know. So one more competitor left. Charlotte Booth going to be on floor exercise. The 15-year-old from Florida. And she comes from a gym. Olympian, Brandy Johnson. The other head coach, Kelly Pitson. This young lady has really come a long way. Really a standout on the uneven bars, some of the things she's capable of doing. Stepping up to the senior level here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Last year in Fort Worth, she competed as a junior. So 13-7-5 for Jordan Childs and in to third place. Silas Jones, Connor McLean, Jordan Childs, the top three. So now it is Charlotte Booth to close things out here night number one. Coach says she's got beautiful lines, beautiful flexibility, very quick twitch, so she can do the power events as well as uneven bars. Well, all right, I'll tell you what, that double back, that at the end, she was exhausted and she needed to be a fighter to keep that on her feet. She did. Saw her at the Winter Cup and then recently at the U.S. Classic in Salt Lake City, the 15-year-old from Florida, Charlotte Booth.
But going to take you back short while ago. Kayla DiCello in the mix for a top three spot here in fourth place going into this final rotation, rounding it out on balance beam. And I was surprised to see her still do that mount because it had a very high value in the last quadrennium. They've lowered it quite a bit. It's really not that much of a bonus to do it, but this is still very valuable and she does it great. A triple wolf turn. Used to be able to do more than one of those. Now you're limited to only one. Which I think was a good rule change. It was. <laughs> if you ask me. But I'll tell you, I've, I've seen some of the best gymnasts in the world, you know, that, that really ha struggle to do that skill. It's not easy at all. Now ending on the balance beam. I don't think is anybody's favorite. Oh. But that was gorgeous, showing you know, no signs of nerves here. She said it felt so good to go to the World Championships and have that success win the bronze medal in the all-around. She said it, it really proved that hard work does pay off, and it sure does. Very nice routine. So the number 13.8, Kayla DiCello, and able to jump up a spot to share third with Jordan Childs. But it is, Shalise Jones had an outstanding opening night, the leader after night one. We'll hear from her when we continue from Tampa. So the opening night is complete for the women here at the UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championship. Shylees Jones with the lead, Connor McLean, but not a big gap, one through five, 1 1.55 points down to Jade Carey, rounding out the top five. But the leader, Shylees Jones, is standing by with Zora. Shylees, you're the leader after night one. Before every routine, you tell yourself to stay calm yes. and do what I do. Yes. How did those words help you tonight? Um, it was beautiful. Just really staying calm and in the moment. I nicked my toe in the beginning of training. So just knowing that, um, you know, I'm here and I'm confident and I just need to take breathers and step by step and I'm going to hit it no matter what. I saw you taking those breaths before yes. each routine. You said you liked your showing on the uneven bars. Yes. What part of your execution impressed you? Yeah, so um, I'm just going for a perfect routine every single time I go and that one was pretty close to perfection and um, pretty close to what I do in practice. So it just felt overall just to be hit really good. Perfect is hard. So so how is that mentally trying to go for perfection night in and night out? Yes, just knowing the details and stuff and just know what you're doing in practice and know that I can hit it consistently and I know I can hit it to the best of my abilities. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much. Terry. Looking for a night two like night one. That was tremendous. Shailene Jones, the leader after the opening night. Come back, wrap things up here at the U.S. Championships in Tampa in a moment. Night complete, but Jordan Child's just realizing we want to talk to you. We, we want an interview with Zora. <laughs> She's across the floor, sprints across to have a word with Zora and is with her right now. Yes. Glad you got there. Zora? Thank you, Terry. Jordan, an all-out sprint to get to this interview. Yes. We appreciate the extra effort there. Oh, thank you. You know, they told me I need to find you in an orange shirt, and I was like, okay, I'll get there as fast as I can. So I just sprinted instead. Well, we've seen energy throughout this entire meet, and this is your first U.S. Championships as an Olympian. It was clear that you and Jade had a lot of confidence out there. At this point in your career, how much do you trust your body and the gymnastics that you can do? Honestly, I feel like since I've been doing it for so long, I mean, I've been doing it since I was seven, so that's, what, almost 17 years ago. And being able just to have the experience definitely changed the game of coming into this competition, especially knowing that I have been on the biggest stage in the world. And just being able to know that and then compete was, like, at ease. And I trust my body 100%. I mean, my mind tells my body what to do. You said you wanted to bring some of that college atmosphere here to the elite level. We saw a lot of energy. We saw you jumping up and down for Jade. Why is it important to do that? Honestly, you know, this sport is supposed to be fun, and I wanted to bring that from the college era. Definitely, as me and Jade were talking to the girls in the back, we were like, look, we want to bring that NCAA atmosphere here, and if you guys want to join, you can. If not, 100% under, understand, but we're going to keep cheering and keep doing what we know that's comfortable and easy to compete at. Suni Lee, your teammate, was, was cheering for you all. What, was, what were you all talking about moments ago? 
Oh my gosh, she was like, I was trying to find you, and I was like, wait, what? And she was like, yeah, but then you were over here. So honestly, having our teammates here supporting us, even Michaela being the commentator of the whole meet, is definitely an amazing thing. You know, Simone had texted me like, hey, I'm gonna watch from my cruise that she's on. So <laughs> it was an amazing thing just being able to have that atmosphere again and knowing that our teammates are watching us. Thanks for the time, and next time I'll sprint to you. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Terry. All right, don't make promises that you're not going to keep, though. They were going to make you sprint ac across the floor next time. I think she succeeded in having fun tonight. What do you guys think? Looked like it was a heck of a lot of fun and a tremendous night of gymnastics. Come back one final time, Tampa in a moment. Tampa, great action inside. Emily Arena here, and guys, just one final thought uh, on what you saw tonight high level competition tonight guys yeah you know after the olympics normally it does not look like this you know i was so impressed with all of the athletes on the competition floor yes there were some mistakes some better landings could happen in the in the future you know but i think what impressed me most was the mental strength that all of the athletes had especially connor the the number of weights that she had before yeah. every single one of her teens and everything that she has gone through the obstacles she takes the but how about how about Chalice? i mean just unbelievable Unbelievable from start to finish. She just knocked it out of the park. Different rules from now to when it was in Tokyo, but her score tonight would have been a bronze medal in Tokyo. Fantastic. And leading the way after night number one for the women. Not a big gap. One through five, though. So some top names right there and a chance certainly at the all-around on night two as we look ahead to that action here in Tampa. And it comes your way Sunday night. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern on NBC. But first, we've got the men. Night two, that men's competition beginning Saturday at 7 Eastern on CNBC. So until then, for Nastia Lucan, Tim Daggett, John Wathlisberger, and Zora Stevenson, I'm Terry Gannon. See you back in Tampa, everybody.